Welcome back, folks, to another episode of DGS2 Case 3. So, uh, Benjamin actually had a pretty good rebuttal as to how he could not have been able to have been the one to stab the victim. And now Gregson is now putting in his little argument with this testimony. So, we are going to press it and figure out if we can work around this. So, what exactly do you mean by that? And when a sharp object that stabbed the person is removed, is removed, that massive blood loss can occur. The blade acts as a sort of stopper on the wound and prevents blood from escaping. Uh, I see. This piece of knowledge is so basic that those who are familiar with criminal investigation consider it to be common sense. It's not even worth calling it forensic medicine. Ooh. So if Sado-san were here, I'm sure she would have told me about it. Oh. A good doctor, he must have used his own body to block the view of himself stabbing the victim right in the heart. And leaving the weapon in to act as a stopper, he then teleported the body. I, I would never use my beloved tools for such filthy work! Screwdrivers are made for driving screws. That's common sense to us scientists. Regardless, it would explain why no blood traces were found at the crime scene. Well, that's all there is to the testimony, huh? Never would have imagined that the victim would have been stabbed. Word Van Zeke's hiding that fact on purpose. Probably. Anyway, in this situation, the best thing for me to do would to give everything a good hard pressing. Let's look at the screwdriver. Oh, well, that's a uh, that's extremely red. This is blood. It must belong to Mr. Kingsley. This is why I hate looking at murder weapons. Oh, Naruto still can't handle blood. This poor boy. I think I've seen this weirdly assertive shape before. Yeah, no doubt about it. It was stuck in the wire mesh along the floor of the device. I think it might be a good idea to make note of this information. Screwdriver. A metal screwdriver found stuck in the wire mesh along the floor of the device. Has a very unique shape. Alright. Now that we got that information, we're gonna present that. As long as the weapon was left stuck in the victim, there wouldn't have been much blood loss. Is that correct? Well, there to have been no traces of blood on the stage, even though he'd been stabbed in the chest. We must indeed assume that the weapon acted as a stopper of the wound and prevented blood from leaking out. This can be considered common sense anywhere in the world, thanks to modern forensic medicine. Incidentally, regarding the screwdriver, we actually found it when we were investigating the crime scene yesterday. What? On the floor in the wreckage of the device, it was stuck in the wire mesh. The detective stopped us when we went to pick it up. Isn't that right, Detective Gregson? Yes, son, you were there! Well, uh, uh, that's true. Detective, don't tell me. You authorized the defense to investigate the device, which was protected by the special provision for the protection of science and technology. Uh, no! Nothing of that! All I did was... I, I allowed him to look around on the stage as long as he didn't lay a finger on the device! It's true. This screwdriver was on the stage where the device was. But don't you think that's odd? What? What's odd? If the body had really been teleported with this still stuck in it, then there's no way it should have been left on the stage. Uh... That's right. It should have been sent through the air with Kingsley-san to the Crystal Tower. And found still stuck in his body. Good. Yeah! God, Gregson, why did you have that oversight? You were there. You can't refute this. Order, order! 
Well, what do you have to say about that, witness? Well, uh, I'm afraid I don't. Everything else attached to the victim's body were all teleported along with him. If the screwdriver really had been stuck into the victim's body, then naturally, it would have also been teleported. G -g this is an unexpected turn of events. I was told there was no way hyperelectric instantaneous teleportation could actually work. Yet, it's being discussed here in court as if it had work. Alright, I'd better throw all my weight into this one. Your Honor, as long as the prosecution cannot offer a logical explana explanation for this contradiction, then we have no choice but to conclude that the prosecution's case is flawed. It looks like Lord Van Zeeks has no rebuttal. Maybe not him, but... What is it, defendant? I thought so. It's just as I predicted. Mr. Norohoto, please rest assured. Of what? According to the conclusion I reached, there's no contradiction here. What? Even if Andrew had been stuck in Mr. Kingsley's body, it's only natural that he alone wouldn't have been teleported and would have remained on the stage. What? What? What indeed? Durpor! What? Excuse me! What are you. Uh, and there goes the wine bottle. <laughs> Apparently, we need to hear further testimony. From this defendant. No, this outstanding scientist. Hmm. <laughs> I worked so hard to find that contradiction. Jeez, you can't take your eyes off these scientists for one second. In that case, the court requests the defendant's testimony. Give us your scientific stance on the contradiction that the defense just pointed out. In the name of the god of science! God damn it, Benjamin! Look, have you considered that, yeah, you... If you if you are, are proven guilty, you would never actually continue any of your scientific work. Scientific stance on the contradiction. My research still hasn't yet reached the stage of compiling the data from the experiment, but... Theoretically, metal is unable to be teleported. That's why the metal weapon was left behind. In other words, the point Mr. Naruhoto just indicated is not a problem at all. I owe Mr. Kingsley a great deal. He helped my theory take shape. It's my duty to defend the device we made together. Why are you... <laughs> By arguing with the defense? This does not look good. Your own client fights back. Uh, the defendant's statements just now. Metal objects cannot be teleported. Apparently that was part of his theory. Meaning? The weapon, the screwdriver, was made of metal. Even if the body had been teleported with that still stuck in it, the screwdriver alone would have been left behind on the stage. Meaning that there would be no contradiction in the state of the crime scene. Okay, but there's still no pools of blood. Therefore? It would still have been possible for Dr. Durpor to have committed the murder. Which would mean that my theory was correct! That's why we had to build the cage that Mr. Kingsley was to be teleported in out of wood. No one asked you! Um, Dr. Durpor. Yes? Just, whose side are you on right now? I didn't give that piece of testimony because I'm on anyone's side. 
scientist wanted my theory to be correct. I think any scientist would. Ah. Uh, can you keep your science out of this court of law, please? So, is Dr. Dirtpour an ally or an enemy here? In any case, go ahead with your cross-examination, Japanese boy. Yes, please do, Mr. Naruhoto. Okay, well, I hate to break it to you, but Neto can be teleported in this case, because we have a picture of this, so, uh, sorry, Benjamin. Let's present the crime scene photo, if we can find it. Dr. Dirtpour, according to your theory, the device was incapable of teleporting objects made of metal, correct? Yes, that's right. In that case, please have a look at this photo. It shows the crime scene. Please notice what's on Kingsley-san's face. He appears to be wearing metal rimmed glasses. M metal metal. Oh. Oh, as I recall, the screwdriver that had been used as a weapon was discovered on the floor of the stage. However, in that case, the victim's metal frame glasses should also have been lying there. That objection! Oh, 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 my, my fairy! This is incredibly difficult for me to say, Dr. Dirtpour, but there's an obvious contradiction in your theory. Rocking that objection. Oh, yeah. Order! 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 What is the meaning of this? If the teleportation didn't actually occur that day, then that would mean it's possible that the victim was actually killed somewhere other than up on stage. In other words, it would have been impossible it would have been possible for someone other than the defendant to be the murderer. My theory is real! My ex experiment that day definitely succeeded! Objection. May I be permitted to speak as a member of the Royal Science Association? What is it, Jura for? As someone who has devoted his life to science, there is one thing I cannot tolerate. Those who commit fraud under the pretense of practicing science. The now hold on then! Are you calling me a fraud? I believe your theory was just proven false, was it not? In other words, that experiment was nothing more than trickery. I can declare this decisively. The man standing there is an audacious, shameless, fraudulent bastard. That device of his ought to be torn apart and thoroughly investigated. That device is the embodiment of my theory! Anyway, it should be covered under the special provision for the protection of science and technology. What? Alright, who was it? Who made up such a ridiculous rule? This seems to be heading in an unfortunate direction. What can I do to help Dr. Dirtpour? Raise an objection, wait and see. Raise an objection. Dr. Dirtpour never claimed that his new technology was perfected yet. Besides. Besides what? Spending a huge sum of money to build a fake device and presenting it in a public experiment. He had no reason to go to such lanes to do something like that. If it's a reason you're looking for, there is one, and a glaring one at that. It's obviously for the research funding. Uh, yeah, we kind of forgot about that. On the off chance that his flimsy theory ended up gaining government recognition, the defendant and his cronies stood the chance to secure themselves a generous sum in research funding. M my cronies? Just how much money would it have been? Ten pounds, perhaps? It's much more mind-boggling a sum than that. 
500 pounds in the space of a year. Oh, you could have all kinds of fun on that for years. Dishonest experiments aiming to secure that financial aid have been on the rise recently. Moreover, there are a great number of scientists who fight over how that financial aid is divided among them. It's a very compelling motive for murder. I believe we can all agree on that. It's not like that! I... I wasn't trying to hoodwink the government! My theory is real! Please believe me! Regardless of how suspect his theory sounds, the fact remains that the victim was indeed instantly reported to the Crystal Tower. In other words, the experiment was a success. The... The road. In which case, the only one who could have committed the murder remains the defendant. B Burrow. <laughs> it's just, where is this trial headed? If I may, Your Honor. What is it, Lord Vanseeks? The prosecution would like to summon a new witness at this juncture. A new witness? Who might that be? A few people who witnessed the incident from some VIP seats. You mean, they're eyewitnesses? The court accepts the prosecution's request. The court would also like to hear some eyewitness testimony. The prosecution's claims remains firm. The experiment was the real deal. While at that stage, the defendant killed the investor, the victim. Defense. Yes. You will also take this opportunity to reaffirm your own position on this case. There's definitely a contradiction in Dr. Dirtpoor's theory. What am I supposed to think about that? Be a lawyer! <laughs> the court will now take a brief recess. Are you here to defend Dirtpoor or are you here to defend his, uh, his, his, his scientific theories? We ask that the prosecution prepare the new witnesses during that time. As you wish. Now then, the court will begin its 20 minute recess. We continued, which we are continuing, so. <laughs> no savings. We have uh, 12 minutes? 12 minutes ish, give or take? Yeah, something like that. Ah, oh, okay. God damn it, dirt poor. I, I, I just had a feeling things were. It, the, when you bring law and science together, it does not. It, it never goes very well. Oh, skipping that. Same day, 10.44 a.m., the Old Bailey's Defendant's Lobby. Mr. Naruhodo. What was all that about earlier? No, what I really want to know is... What in the blue blazes was that all about? You made my theory sound like some kind of flaw-riddled trickery! I, I'm really sorry about that. You promised, didn't you? That you'd prove that the unfortunate explosion was an accident and not murder. And that you'd protect my precious device in the process. And yet, what you've actually done is... He's doing his job defending your face! You're right, I did make you a promise. A promise to believe in you and fight for you until the bitter end, the bitter end. But I believe I also warned you that I don't know the first things about science or theories. Besides, the contradiction in your theory is real. Ah, uh, but, but, that's only because, you know, I'm still in the middle of my research! But... Mr. Kingsley died as a result, right? 
Yes, you're right. He did. It's all my fault. What's the point in me trying to deny that to you? Clearly that's not right. Not only as a scientist, but as a living being! Alright, you might be going a bit far there. But, while we're on the topic of things that are clearly not right... I can't believe Baroque is treating me like this! Yeah, you two are old friends, and he's treating you like a murderer. Clearly that's not right, not only as a prosecutor, but as a living being! Oh wait, I guess Grim Reapers can't really be considered living beings, so maybe he's in the clear? Came to terms with it in a really weird way. Please, allow me to confirm just one thing with you. Well, what might that be? The only thing contained in that device are your theories. And no illusionary gimmicks, right? I drew the blueprints for the device myself. I put my heart and soul into every line, and my faith is nothing less than the future of scientific technology. My theory may still be incomplete, but please believe in me, Mr. Naruhodo. All right then, Dr. Dirtpour. Defense, defendant. The preparations for the next witnesses are finished. It's time for court to reconvene. Head to the courtroom at once. Oops, I went ahead. <laughs> it's okay. It wasn't like anything that important. It's just, it's time to go in. Dr. Dorpor's device. But if it's the real deal, like he theorized, then they're right. It's impossible for anyone but the doctor himself to be the murderer. But, on the other hand, there's what Homesan told me. Realizing the little doctor's theory would be completely impossible. Just, what on earth am I supposed to be proving here? Why is it always the third case that always like has like this moral issue that they have to get through? <laughs> like, freaking Mangadol from the third case was also a similar issue. But in this case, Benjamin is actually a good guy. The same day, 11 a.m., Old Bailey, Supreme Court. Well then, in the name of the Queen, court is hereby reconvened. How the prosecution and defense prepare their cases. The prosecution is ready. The defense is also ready. Lord Van Zeeks, you identified the next witnesses as eyewitnesses. That's correct. Fortunately, this group of eyewitnesses includes a Scotland Yard detective. Therefore, I can say with certainty that this testimony is trustworthy. Trustworthy. One of the eyewitnesses was a detective. In any case, the prosecution's position has not wavered in the slightest. The public experiment was performed successfully and came to a tragic conclusion. And under those circumstances, the one who could have murdered the victim was... The man who was up on stage with him, none other than the defendant. The court understands the prosecution's claims. Now then, Lord Van Thies, please have the witnesses escorted into the courtroom. Witnesses, take the stand. You who view the moment that the incident occurred from a closer than anyone else. From balloons? Probably from balloons, right? Oh, right, Gina! I'm like, oh yeah, well, like, who's the other detective? Right, Gina! Now then, witnesses, your names and occupations. Oh no, this boy! Uh, I'm Lumpa Marbatch. I manage all the hot air balloons floating around the experiment expi uh, exhibit. Uh, around the experiment exhibition area. 
I'm Wilhelm Gostrick Sixman von Ornstein. I, cl I came shamelessly all the way from Bohemia to see the London's World Fair. <laughs> I have a fair bit of money. You're also... okay. Why? 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 Who brought... who brought... whatever... which one was it? The Scarlet Letter? No, it's not the Scarlet Letter. Ah, the, the one with the freaking... Ah, the one with the king from Bohemia. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Inspector Gina Lestrade, a famous detective acknowledged by Holmes. I was part of security at the fair, so they let me ride in one of the balloons. I had a time and a half. Come to think of it, I think I remember Gina-san mentioning that she'd been looking down on the accident from one of the hot air balloons. Considering what she saw, she sure looks bright and cheerful. <laughs> At the time of the incident, there were three hot air balloons in the air above the experiment exhibition stage. They were in those balloons and viewed the incident from the air. Even though we were technically in the air, we were still at a very low altitude of merely 60 feet. Well, I mean, if you get too high up, you wouldn't actually be able to see much. 60 feet. That's about 18 meters above the ground. Now then, the court will hear your testimony. Tell us what you witnessed on the experiment exhibition stage from 60 feet in the air. I think we can only hear the testimony. Uh, probably. Frickin' child! God, I'm getting this name. The view from 60 feet up. What a terrible accident. I'm so glad that all my balloons made it out safely. The stage suddenly exploded. And not seconds later, the air nearest exploded too. From out of the smoke of the explosion, that cage seamlessly appeared. A cage then plummeted towards the ground and crashed into the crystal tower. Well, I couldn't see inside of the cage, but no one was near the crystal tower. It sounds as though it was a terrifying sight. Um, may I ask something? This is my first time hearing this testimony. But it sounded as though you just said that there were two explosions. It would be more accurate to say that the explosion occurred in two places. When the experiment was conducted, their hot air balloon was hovering around here. There were other balloons hovering nearby, though. So, the first explosion occurred when the device was activated. Then immediately after the cage, with the victim inside vanished from the stage. A second explosion occurred right next to the balloon they were riding in. The cage that appeared in that space then fell into the crystal tower. That scared me. A cage with a person inside just appeared in front of my eyes with a pop. My mask got burned in the blast, but I kept watching without even blinking. hat I've still got plenty of money uh that's great kid I don't know what that has to do with anything here but <laughs> um if I may ask who is this mysterious little boy I hear he's a rather high-class boy descended from bohemian royalty apparently he concealed his identity and snuck off to see the London's World's Fair Yes, I came to London on a sightseeing trip with the boarding house of my preparatory school. I believe we can have high hopes for his testimony, with its childish viewpoint. Is this child- if it- is this childish viewpoint really gonna be that useful? By the way, this is what I look like without my mask. Well, he's a handsome boy under there. Well now, aren't you the cute little fellow? I hear that a lot. Whatever happened to you being undercover? In any case, the testimony we've just heard makes it very clear that although the device exploded, the teleportation did indeed occur. 
so long as no one approached the Crystal Tower until police arrived. The only one who could possibly have killed the victim was the one on stage with him, the defendant. The court understands the prosecution's position very well. Now then, defense, your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. We will do that cross-examination in the next video, because you guessed it, we are out of time. So I'll see you guys then. I am not looking forward to voicing this boy, because this boy was a nightmare.